Is there any difference? So as you know, all of a sudden, all these places are building these outdoor tents, which uh, I don't know if that makes any sense, but I was in Aspen recently and the indoor is now the outdoor. Like they're literally building additions on the sidewalk <laughs> and somehow we're getting away with this notion that we're safer. Is there any truth to, if you have no, if you're outside as an example, are you radically safer than if you're inside and there's a good, or let's call it a normal ventilation system? So yes, I believe that it's uh, dramatically safer to be outside and that the greatest risk okay. is in fact indoors and airborne transmission. And there's really mounting evidence uh, for that um, in terms of specific uh, spreading events that have been studied and also statistical analysis of large data sets of how spreading has occurred. But yeah, that's my opinion. Also from a, just a scientific point of view, thinking about how transfer can happen, and we are speaking here of uh, you know these aerosol transmission, think of it like infected air, okay? Um, so I'm not speaking here of coughs or ballistic projectiles or droplets. So if I'm outside and someone coughs in my face, like they're still coughing in my face. It doesn't matter if I'm inside or outside, really. But what does matter is if they're also releasing lots of tiny aerosol droplets, those get swept away in the air currents. And outside, obviously, if it's windy, it's like extremely safe. Everything's you know blown away. But on top of that, even if you're just in you know a fairly well ventilated, especially outdoor space, there are just natural air currents that occur because people are moving. Also, just due to thermal buoyancy effects. So the air you breathe out is warmer typically than the air outside if it's not a very hot day, and that leads to the uh, tendency for that air to rise. So in fact, if you visualize the airflow around a person, they're almost like a chimney. In fact, even when they're not breathing, just the warmth of your mm. body will cause currents of air to be rising around you. And in fact. This is one of the benefits of wearing masks is, is not only that the mask can filter these droplets, but also that it blocks the sort of momentum of breathing itself. So when I speak or I breathe, or certainly when I cough, I put a lot of momentum in the air. I create a plume of, of air that goes forward, which can then lead to a higher concentration of air that can you know, go directly into someone else's face and they breathe it in. But when you're wearing a mask, that momentum is blocked. And so you're more creating just kind of a cloud of you know, some extra droplets and particles around yourself. And those tend to rise uh, and tend to then be swept away by the background air currents. And when you're outside, uh, and even in a tent actually, that effect can be much stronger than it is indoors. On the other hand, when you're indoors with very high ventilation, it's also okay. I mean, it's important to remember there are laboratories that deal with virus, including the famous one in right. Wuhan, China, uh, which you know perhaps didn't do it as well as everybody else. But you do understand that when there's a very high air change rate, so very high circulation, you can deal with very toxic chemical fumes or virus-laden droplets in the air, and you can be safe, actually, uh, because the air is so quickly changed around you. The issue arises in normal indoor spaces. Do we have enough ventilation? Do we have you know, you know, other conditions that make it actually safe or not? And that's where the kind of calculation that I've done and, and the app actually you know, allow you to, to make that assessment. But generally outside, you're gonna be substantially safer. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.